Thank you everyone for attending this webinar. My name is Vikram and I am joined on this webinar by two of my colleagues, Mike Yang and Sanjeev Jigajini. And today we're going to talk about high density multi-protocol network monitoring and surveillance. So GL Communications, for those of you who are not familiar with us, we are a telecommunications consulting company and we've been around for over 30 years. We are headquartered in Gaithersburg, Maryland. However, we also have offices in Bangalore, India, and Shanghai, China. And we also have sales representatives um, basically all over the world. So there's lots of different ways to reach out to us. Uh, we have both, we have two divisions to our, uh, to our company. We have a consulting division, and then we also have a products division. And the products division is focused on making test and measurement equipment. I'm not joking when we say that we can produce a, a test and measurement equipment for virtually all networks, all telecom networks, whether they're analog networks, uh, TDM-based networks, Ethernet, IP networks, Sonnet, SDH, wireless networks going all the way up to 5G now. We, pr we have all sorts of test equipment to test these networks. And we can test these networks for many different things. We can test them for performance. We can test them for voice quality. We can do all sorts of analysis, monitor mon monitoring, visualization, capture, long-term storage, and so on. So we have a lot of expertise in a lot of different types of telecom networks. So no matter, and our consulting division complements our products division and provides additional services to customers. So please reach out to us no matter what type of network you need help uh, assessing or analyzing or monitoring. I guarantee we have some solution that can help you. Okay, so let's talk today about network monitoring and surveillance, right? That's the topic of today's webinar. And specifically, we're looking at high-density multi-protocol network monitoring and surveillance. So let's think about what our customers often ask, ask us to do. A lot of customers face the challenge that they want to capture IP traffic across high-speed links without loss, okay, without loss. So Nowadays, as you know, Ethernet and IP networks are extremely fast. So we're talking 1 gig, 10 gig, 40 gig, uh, 100 gig networks. So 100 gigabits per second. So a lot of customers these days come to us and they ask us, do you have any solutions to tap into a 100 gig, gig network and capture data without loss? Okay, so that's a big challenge that customers ask us. And we'll talk more about that as this webinar goes on. Another thing they want to do is they want to filter on specific traffic of interest, right? So obviously, if, if you're capturing on a high-speed link, you can't just eyeball the data. It's going too fast, right? So even if you were to just pull up some sort of protocol analyzer, the data is just flooding you right and so you you can't just anal you can't just eyeball it and and uh see what you want what you need to do is filter the traffic right so maybe you're interested in a specific source and destination ip or a specific subnet or you're looking at a specific protocol or specific ports whatever whatever it may be you want to be able to filter on that traffic so you're so you want to focus and drill down on the traffic that you're interested in. So customers always ask us, can you filter on this type of traffic? Can you filter on that type of traffic? Um, now, a lot of our customers, since we're a telecom company, they're interested in analyzing, comprehensively analyzing voice over IP and wireless IP traffic. So that's kind of our bread and butter right here is voice over IP. We, we can, we can do a lot of analysis for voice over IP calls, and we can do a lot of analysis for wireless protocols as well. And we'll talk more about that. Um, 
what type of analysis is this? We can build call detail records. So call detail records means who called who? What time did the call happen? How long was the call? And other types of data about the calls um, that those are called those are called call detail records or CDRs. Some customers want surveillance capabilities, so they want the ability to actually listen in on the voice calls. Uh, some customers want voice quality metrics. Okay, they need to know what's the voice quality we're we're experiencing here because they need to troubleshoot if they're if they if they're administering a network with poor voice quality. So we have voice. So they ask for voice quality metrics and all sorts of other key performance indicators uh, or KPIs. A lot of customers have some sort of long long term storage requirement. They'll ask us, you know, can you store a terabyte of data? Can you store two terabytes of data, um, and so on? So they, a, a lot of customers do need long-term storage capabilities. And and a couple other points here: customers always want something that's convenient, convenient to view, right? So these days, a lot of uh, vendors out there, no matter what the field is, they like to produce you know, convenient dashboards. Usually these are web-based dashboards. And then that's easier for the operator because now they can just open up a web browser and they can see all the data in one place. So customers often ask for that. Uh, a centralized dashboard for viewing the data from many, many geographically dispersed locations. And customers also want portable solutions, okay? so. Some customers just want to test equipment that they can stick in a lab, that they can stick in a rack, and keep it there for the lifetime of the equipment. But then we also have a lot of customers who want portable solutions, who can take it out into the field, tap into a network here, and then move to a different site and tap into a network over there, and, and so on. So portability is key for a lot of customers. And also, some customers want to be able to play back the traffic. So what I mean by that is they want to record the traffic, and then at a later time they want to play back that traffic uh, to test some sort of application or some sort of infrastructure. So perhaps they want to say, um, you know, we have all this traffic stored. We want to play it back onto the network just like when we captured it to see how this new infrastructure behaves because we just put in new infrastructure or we just uh, incorporated in new software applications. So they want to play back that traffic. So these are just some of the considerations and some of the requirements that customers have uh, when they when they want to do network monitoring and surveillance, right? And the title of this webinar is Network High Density Net, uh, Multi-Protocol. So they want high density, meaning high speeds, multi-protocol, meaning lots of different protocols, that they want to be able to analyze. OK, so basically now you're wondering, OK, does GL have all that? And the answer is yes. We have a great, great solution that we're excited to talk to you about today. It's called Packet Scan HD. HD stands for high density. OK, so this is like we're talking gigabit Ethernet, 10 gig, 25 gig. Uh, 40 gig and 100 gigabit Ethernet capability here. So Packet Scan HD, we're going to really delve into this product because it addresses all of the challenges and all of the considerations that I just mentioned on the previous slide. Uh, here's just one variant of Packet Scan HD. It's a very customizable product. Uh, we put it in this Lunchbox PC. So this is this is like a like a yeah this is a lunchbox pc so you can you can you see this handle here you can carry it with you it's portable you can take it out into the field it's not very heavy uh it's got a full-blown monitor and keyboard and then we have these specialized network interface cards or NICs, and we can put met, uh, multiple of them as we'll talk about later on into this lunchbox pc 
and that's how you tap into the network. Okay, so you're tapping into, let's say, a 100 gigabit Ethernet network. You feed it right into this packet scan HD, and no problem, it will be able to analyze the traffic. Now, one quick comment, it's also available as a rack mount unit. So we're showing the portable version right now, but keep in mind, if you do want like a rack mount version for some sort of stationary um, stationary solution, we all... We also uh, offer this as a server rack. So if that's your requirement, we, we do have that as well. OK, so Packet Scan HD, like I said, it, it's, so, it's very customizable. We can do a lot for you. But what we want to do today is just kind of group it into three different models that we have. The three models are like a low end, medium end, and high end uh, model. So what's the difference? Well, this table basically summarizes what each uh, packet scan HD system can give you. So the low end, let's say you just need uh, to tap into a gigabit ethernet network. So we can provide four different giggy interfaces, uh, network interfaces. And we can provide, again, RAM is very important, right? So when you're capturing on high speed links, your RAM is going to fill up very fast, okay? Maybe in a matter of seconds, depending on how fast you're capturing at. So uh, the key here is RAM. And then if you want to save those packet captures, you need a sufficient uh, hard disk storage. So we offer these solid state drives. Um, and at the low end, we, we go up to a gigabit Ethernet with a 16 gigabyte RAM and two terabyte hard drive. OK, so as we go up in, in the models, you see that we're able to go up to higher speeds. So at the medium end, we can go up to 10 gigabit Ethernet. And we, we have multiple ports, right? So we can go up to four different uh, gigabit, 10 gigabit Ethernet ports. And a high end, we can go uh, basically all the way up to 100 gigabit Ethernet, right? So you would specify to us, hey, we need 10 gig or, hey, we need 25 gig or we need 40 gig or 100 gig. So uh, these are the different data rates. And also notice that the RAM is increasing as well because it has to. If you're going up at to higher speeds, your memory is gonna fill up much quicker. So at the medium end, we offer 32 gigabyte RAM. At the high end, we go up to 128 gigabyte RAM. And we can offer many different, uh, and for the medium end, we can provide four solid state drives, okay? And each solid state drive is two terabytes. So that's four two terabyte drives. Uh, and at the high end, that's eight. And actually eight solid state drives. And each solid state drive is almost four terabytes, okay? So that's a lot of storage. That's like more than 30 terabytes of storage right there. So we can, we can, whatever your need is, we can go pretty high up in storage capability, okay? Um, so anyway, uh, we, we have all these different capabilities. Okay, so how, what, what does this look like in practice? So most of the time, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna plug Packet Scan HD into the monitor ports on a switch. So this is some industry grade switch. Uh, it's got some um, normal ports, and then they've set up some monitor ports, right? And as we all know, the monitor ports basically copy traffic from the other ports, whatever other ports you're specifying, and it spits it out the monitor port. And so packet scan will then connect into the monitor port and will therefore be able to see all of that traffic. So you would plug packet scan HD into a monitor port on a switch. So in, in, in this diagram here, we've, we've shown a couple different versions of what you could do. Say you're trying to tap into some 25 gig ethernet uh, interface, and you could just take those two uh, uh, ports, plug in the required SFPs and the cables, and hook it up to two ports, monitor ports on the switch, and you're good to go. What you could also do 
with these same two ports there's just two ports here but if you use a breakout cable and each breakout cable can break out the traffic into four different uh, streams so now what you can do is you have two of these so you have eight different streams and you can hook up to eight different monitor ports simultaneously have those eight streams of traffic feed right into these two uh, NICs or these two ports okay so that allows you to capture across many different ports simultaneously and feed it in to just two uh, ports right there so it's, it's a very clean solution um, we uh, like I'll show on the next slide we, we can provide these breakout cables we can provide all the SFPs and so on so it's very flexible you can you can tap into up to eight different ports or you can just do two or one and so on so you can also put multiple if you notice in this picture there's actually multiple NICs here so there's one NIC here that's that has four interfaces uh, I mean four ports you have another NIC that has two ports so you we can stack multiple NICs into the packet scan HD okay so I, ho I hope you see that you, you can really tap in um, and it's a pretty flexible and powerful solution okay so we do often get asked about SFPs okay uh, customers always want to know oh will this SFP work will that SFP work multi-mode single mode 850 nanometers 1310 nanometers and so on um, here are just some of the SFPs that we know work uh, if, if you do if you are worried about the SFPs you can always ask us and we can and we can check to make sure it works but with packet scan HD we we have not come across any SFPs that have not worked okay so we are pretty confident that whatever SFPs you have uh, it'll work and of course you can always buy the SFPs from us so we can always send you SFPs along with the packet scan HD and, and those SFPs we know will work so you can always do that as well um, but yes basically whenever customers ask us uh, does this SFP work does that SFP work the answer is yes <laughs> so um, but we will but absolutely feel free to ask okay so like I mentioned this breakout cable is pretty pretty nice because now you can just hook up to one port on the packet scan HD but you can connect to four different ports on the switch using this breakout cable so we can sub we can supply the breakout cable as well okay right here we're just we're just showing a picture of Finisar but you know we, we support all sorts of different SFPs not just Finisar SFPs um, yeah so this is just some examples okay and the key is that we can supply these as well okay additional accessories so we can um, like I mentioned, most of the time you're going to want to plug into a monitor port on a switch. However, there are cases where you may want to just plug directly into a, some sort of fiber tap. So uh, with the fiber tap, any traffic going in here just passes right through uh, this, this port here. And vice versa, any traffic going into this port will just pass through that port. So uh, that's the tap. But then what the tap does is it, it uh, basically copies that uh, traffic onto these this uh, these these this port here and spits it out these ports. So then you would take packet scan HD and you'd hook it up to these ports. And usually what happens is maybe this port will see the traffic going from A to B, and maybe this port will see the traffic going from B to A. And so then if you wanted to see the full duplex traffic, traffic going in both directions, you would hook up to both of these uh, ports so that you could see the traffic going in both directions. Um, so there are cases where you you, you would just want to hook up directly to a tap. So that's, that's definitely possible. And again, we can provide a tap or you can use your own tap, uh, whatever you want to do there. So two different ways to tap into a network. You use a tap or you use a monitor port on a switch. And finally, we can provide a Pelican carry case so that you can just put all the stuff in the case. It's got wheels 
and it looks like a suitcase. You just take it with you and go wherever wherever you need to go. It's very easy. Okay, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Mike Yang, and he's gonna narrate the next uh, seven or eight slides and tell you more about what you can do with the Packet Scan HD. Um, I, I gave you an overview of all the different hardware and the interfaces and the speeds and the RAM and all that, but now let's dig a little deeper into what Packet Scan can actually do in terms of protocols. So, uh, Mike, uh, feel free to begin. Thank you, Vikram. Um, that was a great introduction to the PacketScan HD product. Um, so now I will talk a little bit more about what this box can do, um, highlight some of the features, um, and then I'll hand over to Sanjeev at the end to, to talk about um, uh, the record playback functionalities of this box, um, as well as going to the net surveyor um, component of, of our solution. So PacketScan HD, um, as Vikram had said, is sort of a dedicated network appliance. Um, so it's using dedicated smart NICs to capture traffic, to filter traffic. Um, we have a standalone sort of a software-based solution that's just called PacketScan. Um, so if you're, if you're familiar with that, the, the software solution of PacketScan, um, essentially it's a protocol analyzer that looks at all kinds of different um, uh, telecom traffic, um, analyzes the traffic, produces call detail records. Um, you can analyze RTP streams, provide different metrics, KPIs, and so on. So the Packet Scan HD is sort of based upon that software, uh, where instead of using your system's onboard NICs, we're using this dedicated smart NICs to, to filter out the traffic. Um, so this is enabling us to capture at much higher rate than what you can do with just a standard onboard NIC, right? Because onboard NIC, normally when you want to either capture things where you want to analyze things, you're using your computer CPUs to do that. Now with a dedicated smart NIC with its um, onboard FPGA, so a, a lot of the heavy lifting is now done at these, at the, at these um, smart NICs themselves. So Pakistan HD, really there's two functions to it. There's the protocol analysis portion of it, and then we have a, a pure capture and playback um, side to this. Um, so I'll go over the features of the, the protocol analysis, and then Sanjeev will talk about the, the capture and playback. Um, so since the packet scan HD is sort of a probe, right, you can, you can um, put these probes at different locations at various sites. So that's what this diagram is trying to um, describe here. So for one example, you can have a probe that's sitting in a sort of a wireless um, network that's doing you know, 2G, 3G, 4G, or 5G um, core network. Um, right? you, can, you can tap into the core network, uh, monitor the traffic there. So these probes are basically sitting inside of a network, and you can tap the traffic either through a, through a sort of a network tap, or you can use a switch with a span or mirror ports to get the traffic um, to this packet scan. So once it's capturing the traffic, the packet scan software is going to analyze um, traffic based on these protocols that were listed here. So on the wireless network side, we can do LTE, um, IMS, right, UMTS, GS, GSM, um, GPRS, and then on these uh, hybrid networks or VoIP networks, you can do SIP, um, MGCP, Megaco, so on. So as it's capturing on these different sites, it's essentially collecting the records, creating CDRs, looking at the, the RTP, generating metrics, and it's also sending all of that information to a centralized location. So this centralized monitoring and reporting solution, this is what we call a net severe web. So this is the centralized database where it's collecting all of the records that the probes are, are, uh, are collecting, and it's presenting all of the information to a web interface. And through that web interface, you can sort of look at all of the calls that have come in, look at different KPIs and so on. And Sanjeev will talk a, mo a little more uh, about this solution towards the end. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So these are some of the protocols that we support with the packet scan software. Um, so basically your, your SIP protocols, uh, Megaco, MGCP, right? For SIP, we can also do MSRP for your um, emergency services networks. Um, we can do SIGTRAN, um, including SS7, ISDN. 
Um, and then on the 2G, 3G, 4G side, essentially pretty much all of the, the protocols that you would see in the core network, we can analyze um, and, and produce call detail records on. Um, these are some of the codecs that we support. So essentially these are you know, pretty much all of the industry standard codecs that are out there. Um, some of them are sort of available for you, um, you know, out of the box. Some of them do uh, require additional licenses uh, to, uh, to decode. Okay, so with the Packet Scan HD product, um, one of the key features that we can do is filtering. So if we have 40 gigs of traffic or 100 gigs of traffic coming to your box, and you're capturing and you're analyzing the data, you know, you want to do some sort of filtering before you actually, you know, analyze the data so that you're not inundated with huge amounts of, of data there. So at the first stage of filtering, we, we have a filter that's at the hardware level. So this is happening at the smart NIC level. Okay, so you can filter um, through the hardware filter um, based on, you know, uh, the port of the traffic, what kind of protocol it is, um, IP address, right, MAC address, VLAN, that sort of thing. Once it's once the traffic goes through the hardware filter, um, we can have additional filters that's done at the software level, right? So if you're sending in, let's say, just all TCP traffic or just all UDP traffic at the software level, we can filter um, additional information. So if you just want to look at, you know, for example, RTP traffic that's happening on a specific UDP port, um, that's something that you can filter on at the software level. Um, in addition to that, with the package scan software, there's also a view filter. So if you just want to see a certain, you know, certain traffic from certain ports or IP address, you know, things like that, you can do that as well using the view filter from the software. Okay, so going a little further into this uh, filter here. So the first level of the filter happens at the hardware level. So as, as the traffic enters through this smart NIC, we're filtering on, this, on, the, on the hardware itself. Um, if the traffic matches the filter, we pass it through to the capture filter, and that information then is actually stored to the, to the drive. Um, if it doesn't match the criteria, we discard those packets, and those are not you know, analyzed at all. Once it, the, uh, the traffic makes it, makes it through the hardware filter, we store it into, into a capture buffer, so the, as the packet scan is running, there's an active buffer going on that's storing all of the traffic. So this can be this buffer can be uh, based purely in memory, or it can be stored on the on the disk. Um, so memory obviously would be faster, uh, but with these NVMe SSDs that we have these days, you know it's also possible to um, to store the traffic or store the buffer traffic um, directly onto the disk itself. Um, once it passes through the buffer, um, this, the traffic is then shown in the software. So this is what the software sort of looks like. There's two views here to the packet scan software. So we have a summary view that essentially shows you all of the different packets um, that come in that are that are recorded. So this is showing you all of the the packets that are recorded. As this is running, there's an additional application called a PDA. Um, the PDA stands for Packet Data Analysis. So what this is doing, it's actually analyzing all of the packets that come in, and it's trying to construct call detail records um, based on the information that it's capturing. So let's take a SIP call, for example. If it sees that a, a SIP invite, right, it, it's, it's detected um, as part of this captured frame, it's going to try to construct the CDR um, based on the call ID for that SIP invite message. So all of the subsequent SIP messages that match this call ID will try to collect all of those messages and try to construct a call data records based on that. And we'll actually go into that um, SIP message, we'll extract the RTP information from the STP as well. So we know where the RTP traffic is flowing at the UDP level. And so we'll collect all of that information, um, the SIP messages with the RTP traffic, and we'll present all of that to you in the PDA. So the PDA is, is essentially collecting the records, and it's also giving you actually in live uh, in in real time um, all of the RTP traffic. You know, it'll give you the MOS score um, for what the voice quality is based on um, based on the packet metrics. 
So looking at things like um, discarded packets, missing packets, um, things like that. Okay, so this is a look at the hardware filter that's available on the box. Um, so we have 10 filters available to you um, that you can choose to enable. For each filter, um, you can define sort of the general information. So things like frame length, uh, port number, uh, MAC address, um, VLAN, um, IP address, things like that. So for each of those filters, you can um, construct the sort of the criteria for that filter. So in this example, this is showing you we're trying to filter on a IP address here. Um, once you add this criteria, you can actually add multiple criteria to, to the same filter, right? So in this case here, we have we're filtering on a VLAN and a IP address. And then based on the condition here, we can do an AND or an OR. So in this case, we're looking for traffic that matches the VLAN ID of 301 and the IP address of uh, 192.168.1.20. Um, so you can add as many statements here as possible um, using this and or condition and then apply that as the filter um, to the to the hardware. So this, this bottom window here is sort of showing you what the current um, filter that's being applied um, is. So again, 10 different filters, you can enable them all, and, you know, try to match all of the um, criteria that you have defined for each of those filters. Okay, so this is not going back to the packet scan. We have the summary view where you show all the different packets that have come in. Um, for each of those packets, you can see the time that, it had, that, the, that the packet was received, um, length, um, you know, MAC address, IP address, and so on. And at the same time, if you click on each of those packets, you'll get the decode of the message um, in the window down here. So that was the summary view. Now, in this view here in the, in the window in the front, this is the PDA, uh, packet data analysis. So again, this is collecting all of the, or it's analyzing all of the traffic that have come in um, that has been captured by the packet scan, and it's, it's constructing call detail records based on that. So what you see here, um, we're looking at the SIP protocol. Um, in this drop-down window, there's a drop-down for all the different protocols that we that we support. Um, this is showing you just the SIP calls. So you notice for each call, we're constructing, or we're, we've collected all of the messages, the SIP messages um, that are part of this call, and we're displaying all of the messages in this uh, call graph here. And for each of the message, you can click on it. It'll you know, show you the full decode of the message in this uh, bottom right window here. And then you'll notice that there's also an RTP here. So this is showing you actually the first RTP packet that was received. Um, it'll show you which port uh, that, that, that this uh, RTP packet was uh, captured on. Okay, so with this PDA view, so there's also triggers and actions that we can configure. So what that does is, you know, based on certain criteria for a call that was that was received in the PDA, we can enable a trigger. Um, the trigger um, can let you do the following actions. So you can save the call in an HDL format or a Wireshark format. HDL is, is our proprietary format that we use for, for packet scan. Um, but you can convert this format to a PCAP so that you can you can view it in a uh, in Wireshark as well. So one of the actions that you can do is based on some kind of a trigger, some kind of criteria that gets satisfied, we'll enable a trigger. Um, from the action of saving it to HDL, um, exporting the call as a C, uh, as a, the call detail records to a CSV file. We can also extract the audio from this call um, and save it in a WAV format, so you can listen to the to the audio um, sort of uh, in an offline mode. Um, if there's facts um, in this call, we can also extract the facts image um, in a TIFF format um, and, and save it to the disk. And so some of those triggers can be the calling number um, or a call or the call number of a call, whether it's a pass or a fail, um, different call types, call duration. Um, if there's error on the call, or if a mask score of the call is below a certain threshold, right, those are different things that you can trigger on. Um, and as far as voice quality metrics, um, as the call happens, 
um, live, we can actually have a live look into the call. Um, it'll look at all, of the, it'll analyze all of the RTP packets um, and construct a mean opinion score um, based on the data, the packet metrics that, that we're observing during the call. So this graph here is actually giving you a live look of the call. So you'll see that initially the call quality isn't that great, um, but it does improve over time. Um, you'll see a score here of a 2.0, um, and then eventually goes to a 3.0 and sort of levels off there. So it, um, it's essentially gathering the, the MOS score. We can look at the MOS score for the last you know, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or you can look at the MOS score for the entire call duration, sort of a aggregated um, or like an averaged uh, mean, mean opinion score. And for each of the different codecs that we support, you can sort of define a range where you can say, you know, what the what a poor MOS score would, would uh, look like, what an average score would look like, or uh, what a good score would uh, look like. And at the same time, right, with this PDA view, um, for these all of these essentially web calls, um, we can actually listen in on the call as it happens. So as we're capturing these live calls, there's a feature that we have where we can basically play the audio um, in real time. So we were able to listen in on uh, any of the calls that we're capturing, um, uh, as well as producing the, the RTP um, metrics and, and the uh, mean opinion scores. Okay, so that was a quick overview of some of the you know the, the highlights of the packet scan software. Um, so now I'll hand it over to Sanjeev, and he's going to talk about the packet recorder and playback application, which is sort of a purely um, cap your software without doing any protocol analysis. Okay, Sanjeev. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mike, uh, for explaining about uh, the packet scan, uh, which about mainly the which does this uh, protocol analysis. So now here uh, we are going to look into the another module uh, of this packet scan HD appliance, uh, which we call it as a uh, packet recorder and uh, playback. Uh, so in the next slide. Uh, so as we see uh, increase in the re uh, requirement of this uh, network with high speed uh, traffic links, uh, there is also a need for uh, ability to monitor and uh, react to any unusual events or uh, threats or to test the uh, network performance or stability. So in order to do that, uh, here uh, we have two uh, use cases. Uh, one is which we call it as a packet recorder. So uh, and another is a replay, a packet replay or playback. So packet uh, recorder, uh, we can uh, use this uh, to uh, record the uh, traffic at uh, uh, wire speed without any uh, loss. So these uh, recorded uh, files, we can use it for post analysis or uh, recreating this uh, uh, traffic or the same network uh, status uh, uh, characteristics by replaying that traffic uh, using our uh, uh, playback applications. So these uh, recorded uh, traffic, uh, what we say, it can be uh, done with the post analysis or even uh, we can carry or I mean do or hand over it to some other um, group for doing this analysis and by saving it to a different uh, file formats like uh, HDL, which is a GL proprietary or even a very common uh, file format, which we call a Wireshark TCAP. So in the next slide, uh, so here uh, we are listing the main uh, features, important features of our these uh, packet recorder and uh, playback applications. So as I mentioned, uh, it is very uh, necessary now to record the uh, traffic, uh, loss, uh, traffic at high speed uh, lines without loss, which is we say is lossless traffic capturing at high speed lines. So and with that, it also uh, important that we uh, do the time with a high precision timestamp. So. Here, this recorder application, it captures non-intrusively 
with a nanosecond time uh, precision. And another important thing is uh, in the network, uh, usually the customer or user can provide the tap uh, to the multiple ports. Say, for example, uh, one, uh, they, one port, they provide the uplink and uh, for the other port, they provide the downlink uh, stream. So it is very important uh, to uh, merge this and do uh, analysis in a single stream. So it, during merging, it is very important that we do this time stamping at the high precision in order to have the uh, packets, receive packets in sequence. So our packet scan HD, uh, this recorder application with the uh, smart NIC does this merging of the traffic of different provided on the different ports with this high uh, precision timestamp. And the next is uh, we have uh, a flexible options, uh, different options to record this file uh, using like uh, different uh, specifying the uh, uh, specific file size like provided in 1 GB or 2 GB or 10 GB or based on the file count or on based on the for each of the file we can specify the uh, frame count limit and we can even specify the duration say i need a, a file for a certain duration like for example 30 minutes or one hour so these uh, time frame or the snapshot of this file can be later passed on for uh, performing the uh, post analysis or digging into that uh, uh, performing the deep packet analysis and uh, another important, as Mike mentioned, uh, even this recorder application has this ability uh, to do apply or uh, do this hardware filters uh, based on uh, like MAC address or VLAN tags, IP uh, address ranges. We can provide a, a IP address mask, which we are interested in uh, like recording particular uh, subnet or the group of IP addresses and it can be even configured to apply the hardware filters for example specific port say for example http uh, with at or some smtp ports or sip ports we can configure those specific port numbers and filter in only the traffic of interest uh, in this um, high speed uh, link so this is about the uh, uh, packet uh, recorder so the recorded files uh, we can uh, play back into the uh, network to recreate the uh, same network traffic. So this is very important as Vikram mentioned, when we do some certain changes in our network uh, infrastructure or some we do enhancements. So we need to uh, test it before it is getting deployed. So we can use our playback application uh, with the pre-recorded traffic, we can recreate the same network and verify that our updates are proper, our, our announcement is, um, is with up to mark. So, so this is very important we can, because once we capture this, we can bring it to any different uh, network or we can bring it to a lab or recreate this traffic and do the analysis. So, in this playback, we have option to playback single or multiple files. And also option, uh, we can create a playback at the specific rate, user defense rate, like one Gbps, two Gbps, or if it is a 10 gig uh, line, we can uh, replay that at the line rate, or even we can replay at the same rate what we, it was originally captured. So we have option even to continuously playback or playback for a certain duration to uh, verify the stability of the network. So both the applications provides a variety of statistics per port or general statistics, uh, which even helps to uh, understand the progress of this recorder and uh, playback operations. So in the next slide, so we are just showing a snapshot of our uh, recorder configurations. So in this configuration, you can see that we list out all the ports which are uh, um, available on our the uh, packet scan HD appliance, and even it shows whether the link is up or down. So we can select the ports and the 
directory or path where we want to record the files as i mentioned uh, we can record even the files to our proprietary gl uh, hdl format or we, we can even record it to the wireshark format so we have different options here and uh, we use for recording uh, high speed nvme configured uh, ssds so which we mainly require to record at the higher uh, uh, line rates without any packet loss or the traffic so here we have option to uh, different configuration options like uh, uh, at any given point of time i want to have the like last 10 uh, uh, like 10 files or like one hour data so the recorder application can be uh, run continuously uh, to keep only the latest files n files so which will tell you about the latest trend in the network so uh, we, we may, if we run out of the disk we can use this latest uh, keep latest n files option to continuously record and at any given point of time i will be having a certain uh, duration uh, recorded files so in the next slide um, so the same uh, here we are so trying to show this uh, playback configurations so here as it will display the all the port list and uh, even it provides option to select single or multiple files and the file format and as i mentioned you can um, uh, play back with different options as like uh, playback as per file or the uh, line rate or the specific user configured uh, rate and even i can configure here to uh, play back continuously or even for certain duration or for certain iterations Okay, uh, in the next slide, this is all about our uh, uh, playback uh, and recorder configurations. So when we are uh, running this playback and recorder, we provide a, a lot of uh, important and uh, uh, statistics uh, for each of the uh, instances. So as you can see here in recorder, so we uh, display the captured frames and uh, the number of uh, frames recorded and what is the rate at which we are uh, capturing and uh, rate at which we are writing to the disk and how many number of files we have recorded so far and what is the duration of the record so far so and other statistics we provide like uh, per port or aggregated statistics for example uh, like what kind of uh, or different packet lengths we categorize or try to display the statistics like uh, based on the length so even this will help in understanding what uh, like are we receiving any specific uh, length uh, traffic or any jumbo frames or oversized uh, frames so similarly we provide the statistics at the playback also so number of frames transmitted and what is the transmit rate and uh, what is the iteration current iteration and also the uh, like port statistics uh, how many packets we have transmitted and what are the length of those uh, packets so these two uh, uh, applications or modules are very important in uh, analyzing or or doing a network performance or uh, doing the stability uh, test of your network so in the next slide uh, so we are going to uh, uh, continue with our the web based uh, uh, client application which we call it as an uh, net survey web so as in the previous slides mike mentioned that uh, about a packet scan hd which is an individual probe uh, analyzing the traffic at different at specific physical points or tap points so uh, when we are deployed uh, we can deploy these uh, probes at multiple locations across your lan uh, as we see in our next slide uh, we show it in a network diagram uh, as we see here uh, we can deploy these probes at multiple locations across the lan a van and uh, these uh, uh, deployed probes can be uh, integrated to the central locations uh, centralized database server by uh, feeding the uh, process data uh, by these probes uh, mainly for this long-term activity and uh, uh, powerful data mining 
and uh, this is important as we can do a remote analysis of uh, a network non intrusively so as you can go through this bullets uh, important is like it provides a user friendly web dashboard to access and analyze the uh, uh, network results or the cdrs so uh, as mentioned it works with a multiple probes non intrusively uh, to monitor at different uh, locate or mono remote locations and we can uh, you, multiple users can log in uh, to this web application and they can do the analysis for the spe uh, specific interested uh, traffic or the cdrs so uh, here uh, we have a, one more important capability uh, to uh, replay uh, to listen the uh, voice calls recorded at the uh, probe location this is mainly uh, we can use it for the uh, uh, doing this voice quality testing at some of the call centers or any of this uh, service provider if any of the user complained about his uh, quality voice quality we can enable that specific user by configuring in our probe and we can start uh, 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 recording those voice and that the same recorded traffic will be available in your net server web to listen and export those voice calls to a specific department so as mentioned here we can do a real time and historical analysis and we have provide a lot of uh, data like uh, call detail records message sequences and the protocol decodes all this information which is available which was available in the probe application all the informations will be provided in the centralized database for remote analysis and for the uh, historical um, uh, archive so we also provide this key performance indicators uh, which uh, we are going to explain further about our net server web in the next slides so as you can see uh, uh, this is our uh, main page a screenshot of the main uh, page of our net server web like it has mainly uh, like four important tabs as you can see here uh, data tab reports alarms and users so in the data tab uh, we provide uh, the cds uh, which were we list all the cds which were uh, calculated or generated by the uh, probes at the physical locations so we show similarly as we uh, see in the pro uh, packet scan hd all these call detail records and each call detail records will have all the informations like signaling like caller callee what is the duration of the call start time and if it has any associated traffic then we have all these rtp uh, information or voice quality informations what we saw in the packet scan hd along with that we can do a, a like a periodic search or we can filter for a particular duration uh, and uh, say for example like if i want to see the uh, the call cds which were happened in the yesterday's for certain time or duration so i can navigate to different period uh, like yesterday and uh, today uh, yesterday and last seven days and try to analyze those uh, cds along with that we have important uh, quick search options wherein you can quickly go and search for a particular user say for example particular calling calling number or call number so i can quickly go and uh, do this wildcard search like for a particular subset of this frame uh, like uh, number i can put a, a subset of this number and search for all those numbers or a specific uh, user by specifying complete calling number so in this again we can user can configure his own views for example if he is interested only in failed calls or fast calls or oh, he is interested in only the poor voice uh, quality scores so he can configure as per his requirement all these uh, uh, views which is more flexible and very uh, easy to uh, analyze so one more important uh, uh, tab is the reports so which mainly provides the network level statistics so this is mainly important uh, troubleshooting this network issues and uh, mainly to build your business strategies for example it will provide in the next slide uh, will in the next slide uh, 
we will prov we will provide all these uh, um, like per call statistics if you go into the uh, and try to analyze a specific call so it will provide the consolidated information of the uh, selected call wherein you can see here uh, it will provide the uh, like call flow or the message sequence how it has been happened during the entire call uh, period so this will help you in analyzing or understanding the network uh, the nodes and the message it has traversed for example in lte how it has been traversed across multiple or ims it is from different scsf and uh, different application servers so along with that it provides the uh, like events important events occurred during that call for example when i received the invite when the call has been answered when the call has been hanged up or when i receive the uh, application uh, proper uh, uh, re um, responses so also we see this uh, cdr view where it provides all the information related to signaling and uh, traffic information so as i mentioned uh, about reports uh, this is very important uh, which mainly helps in troubleshooting all these network issues and uh, making your build, uh, building your uh, like uh, business strategies and provide various offers so mainly like call volume call success ratio at uh, like in the different time of uh, time period so this will help you in analyzing your network or troubleshooting your network or means if you are experiencing the issues at peak hours so this will help you to analyze the or detect that peak hour and see what is happening at particular duration so these kpi is very important uh, uh, for building your network and doing this business strategies so basically uh, we provide uh, like a set of standard kpis and uh, user has full flexibility uh, to configure his own kpis based on his requirement so we have provided uh, uh, like easy options wherein he can select his uh, various parameter network para protocol parameters and define his own kpis and uh, configure it to have these uh, reports so all these kpis and reports uh, can be uh, uh, even uh, forwarded or it can be forwarded to mail or other options. So here we have uh, uh, some more KPIs uh, related to mainly this voice quality or traffic. So we can see here the uh, conversational MOS and uh, about the loss, packet losses and uh, ACT counts mainly in case of uh, uh, air traffic management, uh, this one a traffic monitoring and uh, we have one more important uh, this one kpi is failure causes uh, wherein it, we can categorize different uh, uh, causes and we can look into those uh, uh, causes and identify the uh, real cause uh, problem for the uh, those failure uh, calls so in the next slide so all these uh, kpis or uh, the cdrs uh, can be uh, we can do uh, al alarm or configure alarm to alert us uh, for a specific uh, event or unusual events in the network for example if i see uh, any degradation in the call call quality uh, at a certain period so if i see like mos score is getting uh, lower than 2 or which is a poor quality then i can configure certain alerts alarms and uh, uh, and provide the uh, like different actions wherein uh, those calls or the kpis can be sent through a mail to a specific user so that he can uh, quickly uh, look into that and take appropriate actions so using this uh, we can even uh, generate the reports for the uh, uh, monthly reports or uh, weekly reports so which will help us in analyzing our uh, network uh, business uh, strategies so this is very important uh, web client applications which helps in your uh, monitoring your uh, network uh, doing this network analysis so uh, with this uh, i hand it over back to vikram uh, 
Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you, Mike. Uh, that was fantastic. So um, thank you, everybody, for listening in on this webinar. Uh, we really appreciate that. I, my apologies, we went slightly over the hour, but I hope it was informative to you. And please contact us. Our email is here. Uh, you can also um, go to our website, and you can view the webinar at this uh, link. And again, we will email you when, the, when we post the webinar to our website. So, okay, uh, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Sanjeev. And uh, have a good rest of your day. Thank you.